Hi, Bill Steele with 3D Chameleon. And in this video, I thought I'd do a quick little tour of the Prusa Mini uh, installation of the 3D Chameleon um, and show you all the little details of it. So the 3D Chameleon comes pre-assembled, but on the Prusa Mini, you actually need to disassemble the unit um, and reassemble it in a totally different way, <laughs> or sort of different way, kind of inverse of what we had in the old one. Um, so our Y adapter goes into the extruder, just the same as it does on any machine. Uh, and you'll notice that the PTFE tubes here are short enough that they come out of the extruders and actually um, go into the Y adapter and then into the hot end here. And you don't really need much to keep it standing up straight. It'll just do it kind of by itself. Our trigger switch is mounted down here underneath the, uh, the build plate. So the build plate comes forward and it basically runs into the switch which then triggers the electronics. The electronics are actually screwed into, we're just using the one screw at the bottom corner here and that uh, basically you take the screw that's out of the existing chassis uh, in the bottom there and then just run it through our electronics and into there just to mount those in a nice location there. And I've got a little bit of cable management here, uh, zip ties, uh, just to keep their uh, cabling and wires out of the way. And then all the magic is back here on the back side where we have the 3D Chameleon. Now, normally on the 3D Chameleon, the tubes actually come out this way. So for this machine, you actually have to disassemble the 3D Chameleon and swap the tubes over to this side so that they come out uh, on this way. We also turn the motors around so that our, our motor, single motor, so that the... Uh, the uh, selector motor here actually has the cable pointing down this way. Um, we're using the stock extruder, but we swap in our drive gears and um, uh, put that back in place using the uh, standard stock cabling with our cabling zip tied to it. And you see I actually have our cabling running right through the middle here, or the, I should say the uh, hot ends cabling running right through the middle of the two motors. That makes a nice little convenient place for it. Um, with the PTFE tubes coming out up over the top. So uh, the only custom pieces on this are these two mounts right here. Uh, I take that back. We also have the, uh, the switch mount uh, as custom. Uh, but these are all on the Thingiverse page. So we have the, uh, the mount that actually mounts to the printer, and then we have the mount that mounts to our chameleon over the selector. And then uh, there's two different versions of this. One of these has screws that hold it in, and the other one has zip ties that hold it in. Um, you can use either one. The zip ties uh, will use all the stock mounting screws and everything. Uh, this one actually you need, I think they're 20 millimeter uh, M3s. So a couple, uh, three of them. There's one, two, and then there's one here. And then that just ties into our electronics. And our electronics are independent of the, the stock electronics. So there's no, there's no cables between the two. Um, just a little bit of cable management to tie them together to make it so that they can run together. So that's actually the Prusa Mini installation. Not much else to it. Um, because we don't have a control over the firmware, we can't use any of the extra I.O. Uh, there is an extra I.O. available on the stock machines. Electronics, uh, especially if you don't have the filament sensor, which we, we don't use filament sensors on the 3D Chameleon because you would need four of them. Um, but So what we do instead is uh, we would take that I.O. and actually use it to replace the switch if we wanted to do that using the uh, G-code M42. Um, and then you would set the pin number and uh, the pin state with the P and the S parameters. But... Um, and the, the switch works just as good. That just basically you move this all the way up to the very last millimeter of travel, and it only engages that on the very, the, literally the last one millimeter of travel. So you lose one millimeter of travel on the very back of your build plate. Uh, but we also purge back there anyway, so you're not really losing anything. Um, so this setup is actually the Mark III setup now. We have the latest firmware on here. Uh, and you can see we have the uh, enclosed end caps here. So that actually tells us that we have the uh, ability to adjust all four of the extruders independently, tension-wise. Um, and on the direct drive machine like this, you really want to go with the highest tension available. 
uh, on those. So, you know, if you're just loading or unloading the filament, you don't need the highest tension. Uh, but this is actually pretty nice. It allows you to really beef up the, the strength of that uh, extruder. Uh, the profile is available on the Thingiverse page. Feel free to go ahead and download that. But uh, yeah, as well as the uh, the two mounts and the new switch mount, they're all available on the Thingiverse page. But hopefully this video gives you a nice little overview of how this installs on this machine. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, just send me an email. Thanks for watching.